equation of the form a of x times y prime plus b of x times y equals c of x, where y is an unknown function and a of x, b of x, and c of x are the given functions, is called linear first order differential equation. Assuming that a of x never turns zero, we can divide the left and the right sides of this equation by a of x, and therefore this equation will take the following form y prime plus p of x times y equals f of x. It was discovered that it is very convenient to search the solution to such equations in the form of a product of two functions, like this. y of x equals u of x times v of x. We also remember that the derivative of a product is found by the following formula. y prime equals u prime v plus v prime u. Now let's substitute these two expressions into our equation. So instead of y prime we'll go u prime v plus v prime u and then we have plus p of x times y, but we know that y equals u times v. So we go p of x times u times v equals f of x. We can factor out u, and so we'll have u prime v plus u times v prime plus p of x times u v equals f of x. Obviously, to have this equation solved, we're going to need to find u and v functions. And since we have no particular restrictions about these functions, let's set v of x functions, function to be so that the expression within these brackets turns zero. And that's another equation to discuss. So let's see. We have v prime plus p of x times v equals zero. If we look at it closely, we'll see that this, in fact, is an equation with separable variables. We can write down v prime as dv over dx, and then we have plus p of x times v equals zero dv over dx equals negative p of x times v dv over v equals negative p of x dx and then we'll integrate both left and the right sides of this equation and obtain ln v equals negative integral of p of x dx plus the constant. Now let's discuss this constant for a bit. Since we must add a constant here anyway, it actually doesn't matter if we add a simple constant or a logarithm of a constant, which is a constant itself. But in this particular situation, it is convenient to add a logarithm of a constant, let's say ln c sub 1, and we'll see why in a moment. So I'm just moving this somewhat to the left. And what we obtain on our left is the difference of two logarithms, ln v minus ln c sub 1 equals negative integral of p of x dx. As we know, the difference of two logarithms equals logarithm of a quotient. So we have logarithm of v over c sub 1 equals negative integral of p of x dx and then v over c sub 1 equals e to the power of negative integral let me squeeze it here 
e to the power of negative integral of p of x dx and then finally v equals c sub 1 times e to the power of negative integral of p of x dx let me move it somewhere to the top
dx plus c sub 2 times the v function, which is c sub 1 times e to the power of negative integral of p of x dx. Now we can multiply the expression within the brackets by c sub 1 and obtain the integral of e to the power of the integral of p of x dx times f of x dx plus c sub 1 times c sub 2 times e to the power of negative integral of p of x dx Since this sum and break here is a constant <coughs> as well as c sub 1 and c sub 2 separately we can denote it as any other symbol I suggest that we name it simply c and therefore our final answer is the integral of e to the power of integral of b of x dx times f of x dx plus the constant times e to the power of negative integral of b of x an extra bracket b of x dx and this is how equations of such type are solved and you can find the examples on solving the first order differential equations in this playlist.